previously on the bill. Billy Figgis was an armourer, weapons expert. Andrew Tyrrell, he's got some new supplier who gets British Army weapons direct from Iraq. If Tyrell's on the level and Figgis is working with Wallace, we could be on something big. Get the coffees in, shall I? Exhausted. Good first day. Yeah. Let's just say I'm glad I've only got half an hour of it left to go. Canteen. Any unit still about to stop collision with a cyclist on Milling Road. Right, head down, avoid all eye contact. Right, you two. Mel, Roger. I want you to go out and deal with that. It's a young lad been knocked off his bike, OK? Sarge, you looked up. I did not. Yes, you did. Roger. Today's sting was a success, sir. We've arrested Andrew Tyrrell for firearm offences. Thanks to information from this guy, Billy Figgis. Figures is ex-army. He's been selling a couple of handguns he's brought back from Iraq. Figures is the one who got stabbed in the arm. Tyrrell attacked him. He said that he wanted 50% of the deal that Figures had cut with Kieran Wallace. And Figures has never mentioned this, Wallace? What do we know about Wallace? Well, he's got form for GBH, ABH, aggravated burglary, you name it. Bit of a dialer thug. Any previous form for firearm offences? His name's been mentioned a couple of times by Trident sources as being involved with the supply of guns from Eastern Europe. So what do we think? Figures is moving into the big time. Kept it from us? I think we need to speak to him, sir. Find out all he knows about this deal with Wallace. Figures his phone records. There's been over 50 phone calls and messages to Wallace's mobile in the last two months. OK, I want you to have a look at Wallace's calls, see who his contacts are. We need to know a lot more about who we're dealing with here. Sir. Stevie, I want you to go to St Hughes, talk to Figures, find out everything you can about Wallace and their relationship. Sir. It came off a bit better than your bike by the looks of things. Excuse me. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Right. Well, did you manage to see a number plate? No, I didn't see nothing, thank you. Well, don't worry, we'll get you looked over. Okay. Call your parents, make sure you get home safe. I've got a partial index and a description of the car. All Sierra Oscar units from 275. Vehicle involved in the hit and run. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's old ground. You big girls, Blair. Told him that's the car. Watch this, called him. Go. Gonna need ambulance, Ben. Still asking seven out five. Right, you, you want to tell me your name? Hoxton Road, female with head injuries. Over. What happened, love? <laughs> all right, it's all right. Look, I've had enough of this. I don't know a Kieran Wallace. They helped you out, you arrested Tyrrell. I mean, he... he's the one I was selling the guns to. I mean, you slashed my arm, for goodness sake. What more do you want from me? Tyrrell reckons you were doing him over. You were making a deal with Wallace. He's Wallace. talking out of his... Is he? Well, over 50 calls were made from your mobile to Wallace's mobile, so you're really wasting your time denying this. Why don't you just tell us what you're involved in and we won't charge you for it? I can't. You don't get it, do you? If you help us, we'll protect you. Oh, yeah. And if you don't, and we find out about this deal some other way, then how long do you think it's going to be till you see your son again? Don't you dare. Come on, Billy. No. Billy, it's a no-brainer. Just help yourself out here. I've been working for Wallace. Reactivating guns. Him and his boss are hiring and selling on the streets on a big scale. Who's his boss? I don't know. I only ever work for Wallace. Well, where they're operating from? Who's their supplier? I mean, who they're selling the guns? Well, hang on, hang on. I've only ever done a couple of jobs for him. I don't know where the guns are kept, where they come from, or where they're going to. And now this is knackered, I'm not likely to find out, am I? I'm meant to be meeting him tomorrow. But I'm no use to him now, am I? What happened? Spotted a car, she pulled in her right stake. Deep cuts to the forehead, scratches in her hands and arms. A little bump to her push bike's not going to have done that to her. Nah, it looked nasty. Paramedics reckon she's been sexually assaulted. Great. Sounds like one for our friends upstairs. 
The victim's name is Becca Adams. She had a ripped skirt, scratches on her hands and arms, and a nasty cut across her forehead. Looks like she's been sexually assaulted. But what has she pulled over for a hit and run? Yeah, she knocked a kick clean off his bike. I mean, he's fine, not a bruise on him, but Ben and Nate could hardly get a word out of her. We did some searches on Chris and found that Becca made domestic violence allegations against her partner, Rick Davis, on a couple of occasions and then withdrew them. Surprise, surprise. Oh, excuse me. Look, have we got an address for this Rick? No, not oh, yet. Not until she's ready to talk. Well, she's ready now. I'll get Smithy to organise a sew-it officer. I'll do it. I'm sew-it trained. Really? Yeah. Meet her at the hospital, go with her to the haven, take possession of any samples retrieved by the doctor and bag her clothes for forensics. And can you update me first thing in the morning? I'll do. According to figures, Wallace is working for a major gun supplier. Now, figures was due to meet Wallace tomorrow about some more guns that need reactivating, but obviously with his injury, he can't do the job now. So what are our options here? We either go with the electronic and human surveillance, or we take the plunge and put someone in undercover. Personally, I think the latter is the better option. I think it's worth a shot. I mean, Wallace obviously trusts Figgis, and now he's got a valid reason to not be able to do the job. Yeah, I agree. Plus, surveillance can take weeks, months. Without necessarily getting anywhere. No, I say we send someone in. But who? It needs to be somebody who can leave behind their own life at the drop of a hat, be undercover for a while without causing too much suspicion. Yeah, no kids, no ties. We also need somebody who knows about guns. Well, Max, he's got experience with Steel 19. I'd be up for it. It might be better if it's somebody with a more similar background to figures. Maybe ex-army, so they've got a legitimate knowledge of these types of guns with the same skills. You're talking about Smithy? Yeah, I'm not so sure. After what happened to Carly Samuels, I think he's got too much of an agenda when it comes to gun crime. He's too emotionally involved. Having a strong motivation to get guns off the streets isn't necessarily a bad thing. True. We go with Smithy. I'll do it. You want some time to think about it? I'll do it. You'll be saying goodbye to your whole life? Yeah, I know. For weeks, months, maybe longer. I want to do this. We need somebody who won't get emotionally involved. I can detach when I need to. <laughs> OK. Tomorrow, establish with figures how you know each other. Start planning for the meet. Max will help you out. He's going to be your handler for the operation. OK? Morning, sir. What's wrong with you? Ours is not the reason why. Sorry, Rod. Millie! I think it's two and three. Good morning to you, too. As Smith's such a common surname, you can remain Smithy, so you'll respond naturally when your name's called. Right. Any preference on a first name? Uh, Lawrence. Lawrence. Right. You're the best mate in primary school. OK. Well, tell Figgis to call Wallace. Tell him he can't do the job, but he knows a man who can. Right. Yeah. The Haven found a couple of hairs on Becca, which I've sent off for analysis, so that's a promising start. And the CSCs are at Becca's flat trying to establish point of entry. She's on her way here now with her boyfriend, Pete, to make a statement. Find anything out about him? Nothing's mm. come up. Worth looking into him, though. Check CCTV of the air around Becca's flat. There's a parade of shops around the corner at Brim Street, so you might pick something up. OK. Pete and Becca are downstairs. Oh, can you and PC Girl start doing a door-to-door -door around the area of Becca's flat? Right. Who are you going to arrest me? Arrest you? I wouldn't have driven off if you hadn't gotten up so quick. Honest, I could tell he was all right. OK, you don't worry about that for now. Could you go through with me again how you sustained your injuries? I was attacked. I thought he was going to rape me. OK. Did you know your attacker? When did this happen? After I got home from work. Um, uh, I'd had tea. Um, six. Six thirty. Sorry. Don't worry. Where did it happen? In the kitchen. Did you let him in? No. No. I didn't know he was in there. I didn't hear him come into the kitchen. I mean, I was washing up, and then suddenly there was a hand over my mouth. I tried to get him off me, but he wouldn't let go, and... Just take your time. 
Just listen to me. What if Wallace realises Sergeant Smith is fuzz? He won't. That's why we're here now, to make sure that you're watertight on all the details. You need to explain how you injured your arm. Well, I can't tell him the truth, can I? Tell him a gun you were working on backfired. Tell him you've got a mate who's got the skills he needs. And how did I meet this mate? Let's say we met at the boat inn, do you know it? Yeah. OK, we met about a year ago. So that's long enough for me to trust you, but not long enough for me to know all your dirty laundry, all right? So how often do you see each other? About once a fortnight. Where? Same pub, boat inn, keep it simple. You all right with that? So where does Wallace want to meet up? The bandstand, Sherland Park. About 11 a.m., it's our usual place. Right, that's good. We should be able to get a good visual on you there. Now, you confidently know what to say? Yep. Then go ahead, call Wallace. Let him know you're going to have some company for the meet. Hey, Wallace. Hiya, mate. Listen, about this job. He was tugging at my clothes and touching me. Uh, I tried to get away, you know, but that's when I banged my head against the cupboard. He <sighs> was just grabbing me so hard. I thought... <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I suppose I thought if I stopped fighting, maybe he would just do it without hurting me. I didn't want to be hurt. I stopped struggling. I remember telling myself I just had to try and block it out and started crying. And that's when he let go. I felt his grip loosen and... Um, I just pushed him away as hard as I could and legged it. <laughs> Ran straight out the front door. <laughs> I mean, my car keys were in my pocket. I knew they were, because they dug into me. I just left him there and drove off. <sighs> oh, God, that's when I ran that kid over. Look, I was shaking. I didn't see him. I'm so sorry. Did you see his face at all? Mm, no. Can you remember what he was wearing? Uh, but he was wearing black jeans. And I remember he had gloves on. Uh, I remember his gloves were all rough, like leather, you know, all uh, cracked and old. Anything else? Behind me, I didn't see him. He was wearing trainers. What kind of trainers? Uh, they were white. Old. And not really scuffed and manky. OK, how about his build? Um, how tall was he? Uh, I don't know, about six foot. You remember anything about his voice? Did he say anything? Is there anyone you can think of that it might have been? I know it sounds odd, but um, what about the way he smelt? Was it familiar? I should have looked at him instead of just running off. I'm so sorry. I really don't know. You must be Pete, Becca's boyfriend? Yes. I... It's terrible. I... What can I do? How, how can I help? I'm DC Banks, one of the officers investigating the case. Sounds like he went through a terrifying ordeal. You had no idea he was in the flat. Do you have any idea how he got in? I've got a dodgy lock. I kept meaning to get it sorted. I knew I should have fixed it. It's my flat! Well, let's go through here. Sorry. It's okay. How easy is it to get in? Very. I did it the other day to show her. Just a quick swipe of a credit card and bingo. When you were last round at Becker's, did you see anyone hanging around? I stayed round her's night before last. 
Left for work, normal time, about eight. Didn't see anyone. Was at the office all day, then went for a few bevies afterwards, and that's when I got the call. Now don't look at him like that. It's not like it was him. Does anyone else have a key or know about the dodgy lock? Rick knows, doesn't he? He moved out, what, a month, five weeks ago? Your ex. I made him give his key back. But he knew about the lock. Yeah, um, we can see from previous allegations that you've had problems with him. Well, he wouldn't do this. Um... No, this is too. Can you be entirely sure that it wasn't him? We split up about a month ago. He hasn't taken it well. Understatement of the year is put a brick through the window. Graffiti all over the door. It's okay, Pete. Officers will be going around to see him. PC Rider will make sure we've got everything we need. And see you home. Okay? We need to Wallace Bin. You and Figures can drive to the mate in his car. Right. Um what about afterwards? Leave with figures, but get him to drop you off at the tube and make your own way back. OK, you need to see if Wallace arrives with anybody. Check his body language, see if he's anxious to get the job done quickly, that kind of thing. Anything that might give us information on what he's planning to do with those guns. Okay. The other objective is to get him to trust you enough to let you take over the job. Now, figures is vouching for you, so that can only help, but you need to appear confident, secure. It's just another day at the office. Yeah, if you have any problems, you get into any trouble, we need a clear danger signal from you. Well, I'll take my jacket off. OK, good. We will debrief at 12. Well done, Smithy. Yep. Oh, Gov. Sexual assault case. Becca Adams, the attack took place in a flat. How did he get in? Dodgy lock. So we're looking for someone who's uh, known to the victim? Pete, the victim's boyfriend, was at work, then at the pub at the time of the attack. Thanks. Excuse me, Gov. I lived through some CCTV around the Broom Street Arcade around the time of the assault, and one of the cars parked nearby belongs to the victim's ex, Rick Davis. And do we know he lives around there? Lives on Taft Road, nowhere near. Do you and PC Ryder want to make the arrest? Yeah, happy to. Keep me posted. Open the door, police! Yeah, yeah, yeah! I'm on the toilet. Rick Davis? Yeah? PC Valentine, PC Ryder, son. Excuse me. Rick Davis, I'm arresting you on suspicion of sexual assault. You oh. don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Oh. Do not mention one question, so can you lay your line in court? Can you say maybe give me an evidence? Right, let's have a look around, shall we? That's my stuff. What were the trainers like again? White scuffed with a broken lace on one shoe. This kind of stuff's really not going to help you, Defence. All right, I'm all done. Let's get him back to the nick for questioning. Look, calm down, will you, Billy? You couldn't look more guilty if you tried. <sighs> well, where is he? He's probably got a sussed. Two o'clock, black bomber jacket. Well, he looks friendly. He's got a third eye. I'm gonna have to pull back. It's all right, I got him. Sorry, bad arm. This is Smithy. Smithy, Kieran. All right, mate. What's wrong with it? Nerve damage. I can't move it. If I wasn't so naked, you know I do the job for you, don't you? Do I? I didn't want to let you down. That's why I've given you Smithy. Given? I thought you were solid. I don't have to take your cast off. I don't even look that bad. Oh! Oh! You're all right, careful. Oh! Now tell your you mate to shut up, will you? Oh! Are you deaf? Shut up! Now, if you'd lost the arm, well, then fine. Oh. But you pull out because of a popsy spray! Oh! Do you know what? I ain't got time for this. I thought you told me there was a job going. Listen, if you need me to do this, Figgis has got my number. You give me a call, all right? You coming? Let me know. You want my number? I told you. Yeah, we've blown it. We. Oui. I shouldn't have folded so soon. I told you it was a mistake. Smithy. 
seriously. You don't want to be getting involved in this. I need a medic. What's happened? What's going on? I'm the one asking the questions, Rick. Where were you between 6 and 6.30 last night? Peckett Street. Why were you there? Checking up on Becker. What do you mean, checking up? We've been out for five years, mate. There's no law saying I can't hang around there. No, but there is a law about graffitiing her house or banging on her door at 6 o'clock in the morning. <sighs> yeah, well, that was a few weeks back. Did you go into Becker's flat last night? Go in? No. It's clear you're very angry about the breakup. Look, can you just tell me what's going on? She might be an ex, but if she's hurt, we was tight, all right? She may have been throwing it around like some cheap, filthy... I've never touched her, I swear it! You can delete that last bit right now, that's gonna sound. It doesn't matter what you say. Becca was sexually assaulted last night. We've got your DNA. And if it matches anything found on her... <laughs> No, well, it won't. All it'll prove is that I ain't lying to you. But the confidence about the forensics is just a blank. Well, he doesn't fully understand what it means. He's not that bright. We've had a pulse of team go over Rick's flat. There's no sign of the trainers, the gloves. Maybe an accomplice. Rick was absolutely convinced that the DNA test will prove his innocence. So we got someone to break in and assault him? Who would do that? It's not your average favour, is it? Okay, carry on with the door to door for now. Someone must have seen something and check bins and bushes for discarded clothes. Banksy, you're gonna have to bail Rick for now. What, already? Yeah, until forensics get back to us, it's all we can do. He's denied it in the interview. Becca can't ID him, so our hands are tied. I'll check current, look for any known associates of Rick's, and get a list of possibles who'd be crazy enough to help him out. That one, Weldon. Well what? what a waste of an opportunity. Oh. Not entirely. Oh, so you've got the gig then? There we are, then. It wasn't biting. I had to play it differently. Sealing the deal before stropping off would have been a better idea. Yeah, well, it's not over yet, is it? As far as he's concerned, I've got Narky and I wasn't prepared to wait around for him. Well, maybe it'll just make him look like he's worth chasing. You bailed out too soon. You weren't there. You couldn't see what he was doing to Figgis. Oh, so you were playing hardball. You just couldn't handle it when it got a bit scary. Figgis is back in hospital. Wallace did some serious damage to him. Nobody said this was going to be easy. I know what I'm doing. I did the right thing. Really? Because it looks to me like you just lost us our chance to infiltrate one of the biggest gun dealers in East London. Hello? Wallace. I didn't think you were interested, mate. No, I'm still up for it. Just wanted to say I thought Max... Uh, uh, no, do you mind, darling? I'm on the phone. Yeah, sorry about that. It was just me bird, but she's gone now. No, I'm pretty free this week, so any day after tomorrow, really. I left them out a few phone calls, but can we make it any later, say 5.30? 5 o'clock it is, then. Great. Sorry about that. I didn't realise you were on the phone. No, don't worry about it. I've got it. Yeah? Up yours, Max. Guess who I just got a call from? Kieran Wallace. So what was that you were saying, Max? What did he say? He wants me to check over some handguns. I guess to test my skills. I tried to get him to pull it off, but he wants to do it this afternoon. At 5pm. Doesn't leave us much time to prepare. Where are you meeting him? Bullenbush. Right. Let the D-line heater know. I'll get a briefing sorted for half an hour. OK. Well, we got nothing from the door to door. What about you? Nah. Where the curtain switches when you need them, eh? Right. Landlord said he saw a bloke matching the rough description of the sexual assault suspect at about the right time. It was 6.40, so just after it happened. So he was acting really weird, dead jumpy. He downed three whiskies in about 10 minutes, then he used a payphone. Cab picked him up 15 minutes later. These are the two firms listed by the phone. Any CCTV? No, the only camera he's got's broken. Does he know him? Yeah, so you've never seen him before. Sure, Oscar. Can I have a unit deal with a fight now between two males, one IC1, one IC3 on Taft Road, outside number 17, Blue Show Dealing? <laughs> That's Rick Davis's street. Sierra, Oscar from 2 1 Show is dealing. Rick King? Well, we'll check out these cab numbers then, shall we? Well, watch there, Rog. Why 
was he let out? He should be locked up. This isn't helping. And it weren't me. I wouldn't touch her, the filthy cow. Shh, leave him. Leave it. <coughs> Arrest him. He attacked me. I was trying to help. Help who? Becca. You think she needs another violent man in her life? She needs your support, not this. I don't know what to do. I can't help her, can I? It's too late. Forget it. You don't want him arrested? What's the point? Nothing ever happens. I'll go and see about Becca. Sorry. What? Perhaps you'd like to bring us up to speed, Max. I've been working with Covert Ops on a watertight ID for Lauren Smith. It's credit cards, tax records, driver's license, and of course accommodation. TSU are setting up cameras in your new flat, so if you ever bring anyone back, it'll all be recorded. No picking your nose in front of the telly. Now, it'd be good if we had a way for Smithy to pass info back without breaking his cover. Well, what about me? You had to cover for me when I interrupted the phone call said I was his girlfriend. Well, you've got plenty of undercover experience, haven't you? Yeah, just a bit. OK. Looks like it's your lucky day. Right, Stevie, you can spend the afternoon with Smithy, briefing him on his legend. How exciting. A whole new life history. Well, we'll base as much as we can of Lawrence Smith on your real life, keep it simple, and I'll take on a background of an ex so you don't have to remember too much about me. OK. Your mobile's going to be GPS tracks, so we'll always know where you are in case of emergency. Code word for danger is going to be Eagle, so text it. Tell Stevie, phone Max. His number's going to be on your new phone under solicitor. As soon as we hear you say the word, we'll pull you out, right? Sir. We'll let Uniform know you're going to take some time out for personal reasons. Right, let's get to it. Time isn't on our side. Smithy, a word? Are you fully aware of what you're taking on with this job? We have no idea how long you're going to be undercover, out of contact with friends and family. I oh, know, I understand that. Have you thought about what you're going to say to your family? Well, it's only really my mum, so... What about your friends? Mainly this lot, and that'll be taken care of officially. You're telling me there's no one else who's going to wonder where you got to? Right, well, it's the last chance, Smithy, if you want to pull out. After you. Thanks. This is great. Perfect opportunity to be really nosy about your past. I can hardly wait. <laughs> OK, girlfriends, who shall I base myself on? Either the most recent or the one who meant the most? Shit. Well, why don't you tell me about yourself? Wouldn't that make it easier? Oh, I don't think so, darling. You've got a whole new identity to get your head round without worrying about my sordid past. Sordid? Very. Seriously. Tell me about an ex you know really well. Come on, there must be someone special in Dale Smith's past. <sighs> OK. There was one that was serious. And um, Louise Larson. Five foot nine, long red hair, pretty. OK, so physically I'm no match, but I was really after where she came from, what she did for a living, that sort of thing. All right. Um, born in Brighton. Dad was a radiologist, Mum was a secretary, moved to Bath five years later, when she was 11, back to Brighton. Where'd she work? Teacher. Secondary school. What else? How long did you go out for? Six months, maybe a bit longer. Did you sound as bad as me? Longest I've ever lasted is about eight months, and six of those who's on business in Singapore. <laughs> Why did it end? She, um... Yeah, she, uh... She just finished with me. She met somebody else. A geography teacher at her school. What subject does she teach? Art. What school? Canley Comp. She do A-level there, yeah? Yeah. Rubbish. Eh? Hey? They don't even do art A-level at that school. <sighs> well, I, I don't know. I don't remember. OK, so this history teacher, how'd you find out about them? I, I didn't really know for sure. I suppose she just kept going on about him all the time. Smithy, you told me he was a geography teacher. Look, these people you're going to be working with will be able to sniff a lie out a mile off. Stop lying to me. Your life could depend on this. Do you understand? Right. Now, start telling me the truth about Louise. 
You get anywhere with the cabs? Yeah. Let's get a partial address. What you got there? Landlord of the Manor Pub said a bloke came in about 15 minutes after the attack. Right Bill, wearing scruffy white train, is acting weird. He downed three shots, then used a payphone. Cab picked him up 15 minutes later. Cabby dropped him off on one of the corners off Lofter Street. We can't remember which one or which house number. Check CCTV of the area and see if you can spot which house he goes in. Or get anything good enough to run facial recognition. Ben's already on that. Ben, give him a hand. Hey, well, that's you told. <laughs> the reason they won't... We always had to make sure that we weren't seen together. Are you the other man? Dale, you dark horse, you. Look, it wasn't as bad as it sounds. She wasn't in love with her husband. Oh, come on, that's what they all say. All right, then, how did it end? Husband find out? She emigrate to Australia? She was killed. Oh, my God, I I'm so sorry. I didn't realise... She... She married a really nasty piece of work, Pete Larson, and he murdered her and then tried to pin it on me. But I'm surprised that nobody's actually told you about that. I mean, I was locked up for months. Are you sure she's the one you want to use? Yeah, definitely. Okay, right, well, um, I think I know enough about Louise, so, um, just need to know a bit more about you. What sort of things a girlfriend would be privy to, family background. So, your dad? Do we have to? What did he do? Who knows? And when was the last time you saw him? 10, 11 years ago. Maybe more, don't know. Oh. He was a violent alcoholic. Did he ever hit you? A few times. Mostly when I tried to help my mum out. Poor thing. Not me, my mum. Most of the time I actually didn't do anything. And, uh I just let him get on with it. I used to climb out of my bedroom window and go and hang out with my mates. And I would leave her alone in the house with him. What kind of sound does it make me any? Blimey. <clears throat> How much do you charge? <laughs> oh, I feel like Tony Soprano. <laughs> Right. He's going to go into number 10, Lenman Road. Can you see? Scruffy white trainers, leather gloves. He fits Becca's description perfectly. We've run facial recognition, but whoever he is doesn't have any previous. All right. Thanks, guys. Bring him in and interview him. <laughs> we do all the legwork and he gets a collar. Yeah. How long have you been a cop? Hmm. I'm commencing this interview at 16.15. Present are myself, DC Jacob Banks, and Mr. Jeremy Williams. Uh, Jez. And his solicitor, Mr. Hall. Jez, can you start by telling me exactly what you were doing between 6 and 6.30 last night? Um, I was with a friend. Well, well uh, not so much a friend. It was, uh, it, well, it was like a... And where were you with this friend? Uh, number 6 Peckett Street. Who were you visiting? Rebecca. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I don't know her last name. How did you enter the property? Uh, I slid my credit card down the Yale lock like she told me to. She told you to? OK. And then what happened after you gained access to her flat? Well, I could hear her in the kitchen, so I crept up quietly through the hall, got right up behind her, grabbed her and put my hand over her mouth. And then? Well, uh, I started, um, how to put it? <laughs> uh, cuddling? No, not so much cuddling, um, touching. And how did Rebecca respond to this? Well, she struggled, started screaming. Uh, it took me a bit by surprise, to be honest. Uh, 
Uh, but I thought perhaps that's just how she likes it. Well, no, she told me to do it. She told you to assault her? No, no, uh, well, I, I don't know. It, it, it was a sort of role play, I suppose. Role play? We met in this chat room on the internet. Well, there's this site for people who fantasize about this sort of thing. Well, she was up for it. She gave me her address, uh, how to get in, told me that she wanted to pretend to, you know, a surprise. Well, she was very clear about what she wanted. Next question. Do you miss the army? No. Well, I probably would have done if I hadn't joined the police. So I obviously need order, discipline, and <laughs> uniforms. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I, I just, I just want to get on with it, and I don't want to mess this up. I mean, opportunities like this don't come up every day. It's time. Fifty-two Bream Street. Bream Street. ID documents, new phone, basically everything Lawrence Smith needs to exist. Hmm. Shall I uh, go to the house and wait till I meet? Yeah, drop this lot off and get yourself sorted out. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Warrant card. Rebecca was the one who suggested I came round. You should see some of the emails she sent me. You still got them? Some, probably. Look, OK, she told me what night she'd be in, how to get in, that she wanted to pretend she wasn't expecting it. I'm not making this all up. I'm not a lunatic. I know it was her. I know I got the right house. She sent me a photo, a lovely one of her in a bikini on the beach. Did it ask her? Don't worry, we will. So you're telling me that a woman you've never actually met asked you to come round and have sex with her? Yes. Oh, don't look at me like that. We all have our different fantasies. Really? I stopped! All right, I stopped. As soon as she started crying, I let her go. Why didn't you stop before that? Well, because I thought it was all part of it, the role-play, pretending she didn't know me. It was meant to be a bit of fun, acting out our fantasy. I'm not some sort of sexual predator. Please, you, you, you've got to believe me. She had cuts and bruises on her arms and face. Seems pretty violent for a harmless fantasy. I didn't mean to hurt her. Becca, Becca, a lot of Becca. Here's one with an attachment. That's the picture I saw earlier in Rick's bin. Tech guys. Okay. Rick Davis. Great. Taft Road. That's the address we've got. Okay, cheers, Dave. IP address was Rick's. He sent the emails. I think it's about time I brought him back in again, don't you? Oh, Gov, there's all been right a new you. Stay in the car, you keep out of sight at all times. If you park in Slate Road, you'll get a good view of the pub. Max, you stay in the pub until I give you a call in your mobile. I don't need to tell you, you did not talk to Smithy at any point. Gotcha. Now listen, you two are the eyes and ears, that's all. You don't get involved unless you hear the code word from Smithy. Okay? Smithy's been inside ten minutes, but there's no sign of Wallace just yet. Right, keep me posted. Okay. The emails were sent from your IP address to the suspect. Why would you arrange for some stranger to let himself into your ex-girlfriend's flat to molest her? Your car was seen on CCTV in the area around the same time. What were you doing? Enjoying the show? Or maybe you planned to intercept? Play the hero and 
Rescue her and win her back. I don't want her back. I went there to tell him to get lost. OK, look. I sent the emails. I was angry. And then I started to feel bad. I realised that what I was doing maybe went a bit too far. And so I wanted to stop it from happening. Then why didn't you? Well, that's why I was at a flat. But he must have got there earlier than what I said on the emails, cos when I arrived, the door was wide open and there was no one there. Honest, I wanted to stop it from happening, I swear. Why did you do it in the first place? To get back at her. For what? Dumping me. Everyone gets dumped. I know, I know. Look, I told you, I'm sorry, I thought it went too far. Look, I am really, really sorry. I never meant this to happen, I swear. Oh, it was Rick who sent me emails. Yeah. You are joking! No! Sorry. Well, so Rick's been arrested? Yeah. Um, he will be charged with causing a person to engage in sexual activity without consent. Is he going to prison? I imagine so. It's a very serious offence. I mean, the maximum sentence is life imprisonment. And the other bloke? The bloke who actually did it? He's been charged with sexual assault. I will be here to support you through to the trial, so if you need anything, just call me. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for everything. It's OK. Take care of her. Gov, Carl's just pulled up outside the pub and two men have just got out. One looks as though he's heading in. There's another bloke in the car, but I haven't got a good enough view to see if it's Wallace. Let Max know. Right. Finish with that, mate? Uh, yeah. Smithy's just left in the car and I've got an eyeball on Wallace. I repeat, Smithy's left in the car with Wallace. Registration number Sierra 535 Bravo Whiskey Charlie. OK, I'll run a PNC on the plate and check his GPS location. Hang on, sir. Smithy's been taken off in a car with Wallace and two other men. Danger word been used? Not yet. Right, tell Stevie not to follow. Sir. Did you get that? OK. Oh. What's going on? Strip it. What? Strip it. Figus was right. You're pretty good. Nice one, mate. I'm well impressed. Right. And you kept your cool, too. You're in. Now get out. I'll be in touch.
It's me. I'm in. We're on. Fully aware, aware of what you're taking on with this job. We have no idea how long you're going to be undercover, out of contact with friends and family. You'll be saying goodbye to your whole life for weeks, months, maybe longer. Next time on the bill. We'll track Smithy from the moment he approaches the stadium. He's all on his own out there. Gunpowder and lots of it. It's like letting a bomb off. Wake up! You mustn't die on me! You can scare off! <laughs> I do have a dog shot after all. <laughs>